Um, through the years, you know, in conversations with your father-in-law, when, you know, it might've just been the two of you talking about stuff. Um, what were some of the tough times? What were some of the stories that you remember that he was proud of having, you know, weathered those storms or those tough times? What were some of the things that happened through the years? Well, certainly um, when he was starting out and um, it was really just him being the one to make all the decisions, uh, I think taking gambles on things where um, it might have been something we weren't that familiar with, where a customer might have said, hey, listen, I know you do this product, but we really need somebody to replace another supplier. Would you be interested in trying this? And it might have been a leap of faith to say, hey, yeah, we think we can do it and we're willing to take the challenge. Let's do that. And I can point to um, a particular time back in the, the late 80s where uh, one of our utility customers came to us and said, there's only one supplier making this one particular product right now. And it's more advanced than some of the things you might be currently doing. But we know from being in your factory and knowing some of your engineers that you definitely have the capability. And we took a chance and uh, we ended up becoming the premier manufacturer of that product throughout North America. That's very so, cool. Yeah, so I would say to you, um, one of the things that we've come to be known for or that we, uh, we pride ourselves on is that people don't come to us when it's necessarily a Me Too product. We have a tagline at the company that we use and we say, we don't do easy. And we don't do things that are easy. And you can interpret that two different ways, right? We, it might be, we might be giving people a difficult time, uh, but, but the truth is they come to us for a solution. Yeah. And when they have pain and our job is to find a way to cure their pain. And that's why we say we don't do easy. Smart. Now, you know what? It's, oh, go ahead. Difficult things. Yeah. I think that's true for many people in, in, you know, that type of industry. And when you're service minded, I guess that's really like my industry is, you know, when, when a family business is in crisis, when the CEO gets stuck and can't figure out how to get to the next level, um, when they're going to sleep and worrying about people issues, that's when we get the phone call. We don't get the phone calls when everything's easy and simple. They, they wait until it's, you know, oh, here, let me throw you in the deep end, Mike, go have at this. Um, emergency really and emergencies are our friends. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. 69, he started the business. Mm -hmm. The market has changed. The economic situations have changed, you know, what are some of the other things that were obstacles or challenges or things that you saw that, you know, through the time that you've been with the company now running the company, anything else come to mind that you're like, oh boy, that was a, that was a good one. And here's how we survived it. Yeah. Um, so we have, we had a customer back in the early nineties that was in the process of getting out of the manufacturing of their product and becoming more of an assembler. Okay. And they decided to outsource all of that manufacturing. Somebody at the company remembered us from the 1970s when they did what was called farm out because they had, they didn't have the capacity. So they just farmed out the work temporarily. They happened to have remembered Mac products that we did the work. So a phone call comes into us one day and says, look, we're looking to get out of the manufacturing business. We need somebody to come here, take a look at what we're doing. What can you do to help us? What can you provide? And I remember the story. I wasn't part of it. I wasn't there for the initial visit, but my father-in-law went, he 
did his he did his 30 second commercial and they loved it and lo and behold all of a sudden within a week hundreds upon hundreds of products end up at our facility and they say find a way to make these parts as quickly as possible and we did we turned our business upside down uh, one of the really, really ingenious things that my father-in-law did was he had approached one of the key manufacturing people at that company who was being let go. They told him, hey, listen, you're just going to be here for the short transition and your job is done. He hired him. Mm, smart. And we took the brain power that we needed to get us into this business. And this gentleman, God rest his soul, he's since passed away um really helped in that transition and it just worked out so well for us and to this day from 1993 till now 30 years they're still our customer wow what a testament to mm -hmm. your your father-in-law's and the whole team's ability mm -hmm. to pivot you know talk about pivoting that was yes. uh that was a big pivot Oh, uh, I, and I remember sitting there every Saturday morning, I would come in to do the estimates and he would hand off the stuff to me and he'd say, okay, get this in, send this quote out to them, get this, get do, do this, do that. And we just did whatever we had to do. And that's also one of our, one of our mantras at the company is we do whatever it takes um, to get the job done for the customer. 